Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel, thanks for joining today. As you can see, it's pretty cold outside, but I do want to install some switches in my GMC AT4. I want to share with you the reasons why I chose the ones that I did, but first we got to get this thing inside, so let's go. Before we take an in-depth look at the switches that I chose, let's talk about some of the considerations I had. If you've gone down that path of looking for switches, for your vehicle, you have a lot of choices out there. Now for my truck specifically, and, and many of the ones like it, like the Silverados for example, GM actually makes some OEM upfitter switches, which look really, really good in my opinion. They look like they belong in the truck. The placement's a little odd, uh, just because it's difficult to see where the switches are from, because they're kind of behind the steering wheel. However, they're easily accessible and they look factory, and I know that's a big bonus to a lot of people. There are some downsides to that product, in my opinion, and that has to do more with the installation, not the fit and finish, but the installation itself. It's quite extensive. And for those that uh, maybe haven't looked into it yet, this is just one of the documents that is out there that lists all the parts in the kit that you need. I priced it all out on the side here. And for me, we're talking about, you know, four or $500. And that's me doing it myself. So if you're a DIYer and you're not afraid to rip apart half your dashboard and run all these wires and switches in there, then that might be for you. And I'm not afraid to do that either. However, there's one key thing that kind of made it a deal breaker for me. And that was the fact that for those switches anyway, all of the hardware, so all your lights that you add on, your rock lights, your underglow, your ditch lights, whatever you're hooking up, all of that wiring, has to be ran into the vehicle through the firewall to those switches. Whereas some of the other switch options out there, they house everything within the engine bay. So you connect all your accessories there, and then you just have a set of wires that goes into the controller, which will be in the vehicle. So that's the route that I went. But before I get into the details of the one that I picked out, there are other options um, that are more the style that I've just been talking about, the ladder. Um, but the pricing can get way up there and there's switches that I'm sure are very good and from very reputable companies, but a thousand dollars for switches for my $200 light bar. Uh, I'm just not there. It's just, I don't feel that uh, they're compatible um, for what I'm doing. However, I want to get good value. So that's what led me to going with Oxbeam. So I have a bit of a funny story to tell you. So I originally ordered this guy right here which is the six gang panel switch system that gives you this control box here. Very well made, it's light aluminum. Uh, it's illuminated as well. This one's blue, it's available in other colors as well. Plus you have these customizable stickers you can put in front to suit your needs on whatever you're going to be controlling. And then it comes with this switch box here, the switch panel that goes under your hood in the engine compartment. And it has all your connections here for six items. They're all fused, five to 30 amps, 60 amps in total. And then all your relays are here, so you don't have to worry about using the relays with all the items that you're hooking up. So as this was being shipped to me and in transit, Oxbeam reached out and wanted to collaborate on a video and offered me this device here. So this is an upgraded version of this guy, still good to 60 amps, but its form factor is a little different. I wanna show you exactly what you're getting. So this is the switch panel. I actually like it better because it's a lower profile and all of the relays are actually in behind this waterproof membrane. Um, but you have all your fuses here. You have extra fuses in the lid. Again, it goes up to 60 amps and then you run all your positive and negative wires to this location. You can actually run your negative wires and ground them somewhere else and just run your positive leads in here because this is also uh, set up for positive and negative termination. So you hook up that and your controller in this case is an eight gang switch. So you have more switches and they give you all the stickers to customize it the way that you want. What is interesting though, is the sticker set for the AR800 is different than the six gang panel. This one here has one light bar, same amount of stickers. This one here has a DRL. So that's good for my needs because mine has a DRL and I have two light bar options. This one has some extras that this one doesn't have and vice versa. So there's a chance you might not get the sticker that you want in whatever you pick out. But where these really start to differentiate, other than the obvious stuff that I showed you, 
is this can be controlled by an app on your phone with either Android or iOS. And I've already uh, played with the app a little bit on my phone. I'm excited to be able to use it that way. So it doesn't really matter where this is located. If my phone's mounted somewhere, I can control everything right there. This also has the ability, and I'll demonstrate it later, to set up all of your switches. You can group them or you can set them up to do turn on and off. You can do momentary, which means holding down the button and it'll only hold on that device for as long as you're pushing the button down. And then the other option you have is like a strobe effect. And if you have that set, it'll just trigger like a strobe until you shut it off. So a couple extras here, you have a mounting bracket for your switch panel. You have various ways that you could do that with these here. You have the steel mounting brackets for this guy. I put some adhesive on here in anticipation of just sticking it onto the dashboard but you do have the ability of putting a bracket like that on. There's a multitude of ways that you can do it. Some of the screws and hardware there. You have a fuse tap for your ignition, uh, switchable ignition. So this will illuminate and come on only when the vehicle is in the on position. We've got some cable ties here and we've got our ground. And on our positive terminals here, I've already hooked it up, but we have a 60 amp circuit breaker. I, like I said, I've already attached these, but this just goes somewhere in the engine bay within a certain distance of the battery. And then if you have a problem, it'll trip and then you can reset it easy like that. Now that I have eight things that I can control, I guess I'm gonna have to go get a whole bunch more accessories to uh, show installs for on the channel, right? So without further ado, let's get into the install and hook up this light bar with the DRL, the spot lamp and my onboard compressor. Before you do your install, I would recommend that you plan the location for everything. The wire that's gonna connect from here into the cab of the truck to the controller is just over eight feet long. So what I'm going to do, and I'll show you here, is I'm going to install, because this is lower profile, I'm gonna install it right here. You have to keep in mind that your wires travel up through the bottom so if, you, if I didn't have this compressor in here, maybe I would bracket it over here, that type of thing. But because I got my compressor down here and an auxiliary airline, I'm kind of running out of options in this space. So I'm actually going to attach it to the lid of this fuse panel. And I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to cut into any of the wiring or sorry, the diagram for any of the wiring. I wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna end up screwing into any of the fuses. There's a ton of clearance. For me, if I go perfectly flush with the tab below it, then I can install it and I can get the wires to travel through here and have a nice clean look. So think ahead, whatever you're installing it into, but mine is going to go right here and then all my wires will be hidden in between the battery and the fuse panel and it'll have a nice clean look. Hopefully when I'm done, gotta put the cover on the right way but it should look something like that. Like any job, always do the hardest part first. So for me, it's gonna be running this into the cab where I want my controller to be. So we've gotta go with this eight, eight and a half foot cable from this box. We gotta fish it through the bottom here around the battery. Every vehicle is gonna be a little different, but I'm choosing to go behind this insulation all the way down to near the steering column where there's actually a spot where wiring can be pushed through, but I'm gonna to have to get a utility knife Cut, the, cut an opening for the wire to fit through and then fish this through there. What's interesting is the six gang panel has a larger harness. This one's actually smaller with the eight gang. So this one should be easier to do than that smaller switch. So let's go. Okay, we were able to get the wire through. For those that don't believe me, there it is going right through there. And then we're going to run it up here all along this insulation, 
so that we can come back into this area. Here's the other end inside the cab. It's routed up underneath the steering column and it'll route over to the panel that will be here. And then you'll have a little wire. Just go around the corner. You probably won't even see it, but that's where we're gonna put the panel. The wire's ready to go. So let's get some more wiring done. Okay, we got our main harness hooked up to have the control. It's all behind this insulation like I showed you and it goes in through the firewall to connect everything. So this wire is nice and tidy, I'm happy with it. The next is our ignition switch. So when the ignition's on, this will make sure the panel comes to life when the ignition's on and not all the time. So this needs to be connected to an ignition source. Now, because I have my onboard compressor, I have a pink wire that's already routed all the way in there through a fuse tap. And I could do that again with this wire and they even include a fuse tap, but I'm just going to cheat and I'm going to use a wire tap and connect it to this pink wire since it's right here. And I'll be able to keep it nice and tidy like that. So let me do this and then we'll get to the next step. Next, we'll connect our ground wire right here fish it through and to the negative terminal on the battery. Okay, now we'll hook up our power wire with our fuse breaker. Now, if you take a closer look here, I haven't necessarily decided where I wanna permanently mount this, but I think for now, instead of screwing into anything, I'm just gonna strap it to the battery bracket right here. That shouldn't be too hard to do with a couple straps. And then this wire will connect to our box. And then this will go inside the cover and connect to the positive lead. Okay, this is connected to this post here. I'm gonna run it outside the uh, battery box, if you will. Safety first though, because I'm already grounded, I do wanna make sure that this isn't live as it's touching things. So my circuit breaker is in the open position. All right, everything's ready to go. We've got the fuse box strapped down, nice and tight, nice and clean. We got power to everything. I don't have the controller hooked up yet. We'll demonstrate that last. I'm gonna start hooking up all my accessories. So I went ahead and I plugged in my compressor, which is tucked down in here, all ready to the third location on here, which will be the third panel. So it is a fused 15 amp connection, but it's on a 20 amp circuit. I could put a 15 amp fuse there and then I wouldn't need this but just because I want to get it hooked up and demonstrate it for you, I've got two fuses in line, but it's going to go with the weaker fuse, which is the one that is built in with the uh, compressor or that it comes with. So that's going to be in the third location. Now I'm going to take my light bar, and because if you watched the video of the light bar that I purchased, it was a light bar I knew that would fit. It wasn't the light bar that I really, really, really wanted, although I do like it. So I'm going to not chop this harness up. I'm gonna leave all the relays intact and I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm just gonna use this as a switch to switch for the spot lamp under switch one and the daytime running light on switch two. I can actually group them together. So when I push one of the buttons, both come on um, and I can do all different variations, which we'll demonstrate. But in this case, I can just cut this one plug up leave enough space that I could resolder the wires. So if I go to put it in another vehicle or sell it, everything's intact, all the relays are there. Um, so I'm gonna leave all of that and just use this as a switch. But if you do buy any accessories or a light bar, roof lights, ditch lights, underglow, whatever, you can just hook up the positive negative directly to here and you don't have to worry about any of the relays and stuff because they're built in. But again, I'm gonna cheat. So let's get these hooked up and then we'll demonstrate the control panel. Okay, we're hooked up and it's illuminated. I do have the ignition lead temporarily hooked up to a constant source just so I can demonstrate this without having the vehicle turned on, you can hear me better. So we have all of our switches here. The first switch is gonna be our daytime running light. I haven't put the labels on yet, I will soon. This is for the light bar. 
and this is for the compressor. Let's test the compressor out first. So I'm just gonna let the compressor connect and I'm going to move it up to say 10 pounds. It should kick in. There we go. Now I'll turn the compressor off and I'll try and air up to 15 pounds. Nothing. Turn the compressor back on. Make it connect, I gotta wait for a signal. Here we go, now it's working. So we know the compressor works. I can turn it off prematurely on the switch, so that's good. Now let me show you how the app works. Okay, we got our app connected on our phone. Yeah, as you can see, I can customize all the colors. I can start to label all of my icons. So if I go into the icons right here, I've already added the DRL and the light bar. I'm gonna add the compressor. You can take photos or you can pick from the predetermined list. We wanna find air, there's air right there. Hit select and now we have air. So beyond all the nice color combinations and if I have my phone mounted up somewhere, I can control everything so you can see. I can control it all just like I would with the main switch box. So there's some really cool modes you can do on here. So if we go to mode, I can set up each of the buttons to behave differently. So we can have toggle, which is the default. So when I turn on the daytime running light, I turn it on, it stays on until I turn it off, then it turns off. I can go to momentary, which means when I hold the button down, it'll stay on as long as I'm holding it down till I let go, then it'll shut off. And then there's pulsed. And this one's pretty cool to watch. So if we look out the front window here and I hit this button, it'll be in pulse mode. You can see the flashing and a bunch of pulses. Let's go turn that off. Let's switch the mode for the light bar, which is the spot lamp into pulsed and that'll be a lot brighter. So just an example for you there. And if you turn your phone sideways, you get a little better graphic. And if your phone's mounted or whatever, then you could have everything at the touch of your fingers just through those icons and you wouldn't have to use the panel, which I'm still gonna mount over here. So not only do you have access on the panel, on your phone, if you have an Android box hooked up to your infotainment system, assuming it's all compatible, you can do it on here as well. We got the Oxbeam AR800 installed. You saw from start to finish, we did a bit of a review. I showed you the features. I think it's a great product for the price. Speaking of price, if you wanna save yourself 10%, head over to Oxbeam's website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Put in the promo code Dawn's Life and save yourself 10%. But if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.